I've seen lot of videos comparing this iPad with the Magic Keyboard to the laptop or the MacBooks and asking if it can replace that or not. Well, I feel it is a very different device and cannot be compared with any laptop or MacBook. You know, I recently made this video where I firmly stated that iPads and MacBooks should never be compared. But today, I find myself asking a daring question. Could the iPads be the infamous MacBook killer? Now before you think I've gone completely mad, let me explain to you. In that video, I did confess that I used my iPad Pro for 80% of my tasks. The remaining 20%, however, is where things get interesting. It's primarily the editing work. And for that, I rely on the trusty companion of mine, which is M1 Pro MacBook Pro. But hold on to your seats. Apple dropped a bombshell last week. They announced the release of their Pro software, Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro for the iPad. Yes, you heard it right. Now here's the kicker. This surprise press release caught everyone off guard. Even the greatest leakers couldn't foresee it. It just goes to show that Apple holds all the cards when it comes to leak. And I feel they decided to keep this under wraps for two reasons. First, I believe Apple wanted WWDC, their grand event in June, less stuffed. That means this time WWDC is going to be spectacular. And secondly, Apple strategically dropped the news on May 9th, a day before the Google's IO event. Talk about stealing the limelight, Apple. Now let us deep dive into the announcement. Apple is marketing this iPad as the ultimate all-in-one solution for the video content creators. Shoot with its camera, edit with the Final Cut Pro and seamlessly publish on social media platforms. It's like having a whole production studio right at your fingertips. But hold your horses because I have couple of questions that needs to be addressed. First off, can iPad's camera truly deliver stunning footages? I mean, haven't we all very skeptical of the iPad's camera and shooting with the iPad? It's so uncomfortable and the camera quality is not also great. Perhaps maybe after this, we have to wait for the next iterations of these iPads where I feel Apple will bring in improved camera sensors that rival the iPhones. Secondly, while the iPad promises vlogs, short form videos and social media content, I wonder if it can handle the demands of heavy workflows for long form video content. After all, iPad lacks a cooling system like MacBooks and things can get hot when editing intensively. Brace yourself because the Final Cut Pro will hit the iPad App Store on 23rd May 2023 with a subscription price of $5 or 500 rupees per month. And if you do yearly subscription, then it will cost you $50 or 5,000 rupees per year. Pro tip, opt for yearly subscription to save some extra bucks. Plus everyone gets first month free. A sweet deal indeed. This subscription model bring some perks to the table, including affordability and continuous software improvements. Kudos to Apple for making this as a subscription software and not a one-time purchase like the Mac version. And the result of that will be, it will get continuous feature updates and improvements, unlike the Mac version of Final Cut Pro. But here's the catch. If you're already user of Final Cut Pro on your Mac, you won't get to use the iPad version for free. It seems like an independent software on iPad with no connection to Mac's counterpart. Bummer. Now let's talk about the features. First things first, feast your eyes on the jog wheel. Conveniently located on the bottom right of the screen, it's your ticket to smoothly scrubbing through the timeline like a pro. Prepare to get blown away with the live text feature. With Apple Pencil, you can write anything on your footage and effortlessly animate it. Who needs fancy graphics now when you can? handwrite your way to the eye-catching text and get ready for the visual feast with HDR first workflow on the iPad's XDR display. Colors will pop up like never before, especially on the glorious 12.9 inches canvas. And a good news for iMovie users, who I feel will most likely go to the Final Cut Pro on iPad. They can import their projects seamlessly into Final Cut Pro on the iPad and complete the editing journey with a finish. 
want the best of both the worlds utilize the power of apple pencil and your trusty magic keyboard or any other keyboard for the versatile editing experience multicam edit gets a revamp on the ipad making it more intuitive than ever sync up to four cameras footages or audios with a single click no more waste of time on manually syncing angle editor anyone add or delete angles and monitor audio with ease it's all about having that creative control at your fingertips apple unleashes the full potential of their m1 and m2 chips brace yourself for the game changing features like scene removal mask which lets you remove the subject from the background with a simple tap something like you do on the photos app of your iphone ipad or even macbook green screens are so last season say goodbye to tedious cropping with the auto crop feature this time saving gem intelligently crops your footage to fit different formats like square videos or vertical content repurposing your creations has never been so simple before need to isolate your voice something that you do on the mac version of the final cut pro the same feature is also available on the ipad version it's a life saver for those who can't escape the background noise ready for a visual makeover final cut pro on the ipad brings new titles effects music and backgrounds to elevate your editing experience say goodbye to those same old effects and welcome a breath of fresh air into your projects but that's not all apple knows that creativity knows no bounds so they are working on bringing third party plugins to the final cut pro on ipad get ready for a whole new world of possibilities and expand your editing toolkit like never before here's a nifty feature shoot directly on final cut pro with your ipad's camera capture the moment save it edit it and publish it seamlessly all in one place it's convenience at its finest you can also shoot prores videos on the m2 ipad and say hello to smooth playback and editing of high quality professional grade video files dive into the world of color grading with final cut pro on ipad enhance your visuals create stunning color screens and make your videos truly stand out keyframes become your best friends on the ipad's touch interface it's a whole new level of intuitiveness as you tweak and adjust your video elements with a simple touch remember the cinematic mode on your iphone well now if you use that footage on the final cut pro on the ipad you can edit the subject on the go that means you need not go to your iphone open photos app and edit it there final cut pro offers a wide range of rendering options and resolutions catering to different platforms and devices from youtube to instagram your video will look flawless and optimized for every screen and here's an extra treat you can send your projects from ipad's version of final cut pro to your mac version of final cut pro for advanced color grading or object tracking and many more things which are not available on the ipad version unfortunately the reverse is not at all possible right now but let's keep the finger crossed for the future updates just a heads up to enjoy all these incredible features you will need to have apple silicon m1 or m2 ipads the a series ipad won't be supporting this software and also make sure you are on ipad os 16.4 or later announcement looks very good and promising but here are my thoughts you know this final cut pro on the ipad looks like a cool kid at the party who doesn't want to hang out with the rest of apple ecosystem apps it's like hey notes and free form don't expect me to join your click i'll definitely miss that seamless continuity when i want to switch from my work device to my ipad on my bed it's a dream that is yet to come true apple made a big fuss about how the final cut pro on ipad is a powerhouse of video editing but hold on for a second they conveniently left out the fact that it doesn't have object tracking advanced color grading and more it's like getting a heavy light mac version of final cut pro apple you're leaving us with a serious case of fomo now let us talk about these apple's fancy silicon chips i've been rocking my trusty 2020 ipad with a12 bionic chip since 2020 and it's been a smooth sailing for all my workflows but no 
Apple had to go and exclude my iPad from the Final Cut Pro party. Thanks Apple for giving me a serious case of iPad envy. Looks like I have to wait for the next iPad generations complete with a better camera to fulfill my dream of one stop solution for all my video needs. Time to start saving those pennies. Hold up, did Apple forget to mention the external hard disk support for the Final Cut Pro on iPad? That's like forgetting popcorn to a movie night. And does that mean we have to invest in higher storage options for iPad? Apple spill the beans and let's be real trying to edit on a 11 inch ipad screen is like attempting a jigsaw puzzle with the mittens on it's just not practical unless you're planning to hook it up to a bigger screen but hey the 12.9 inches i feel is a sweet spot for editing it's like having a canvas that's just doable enough to bring your creative vision to life now all this what does it mean to you? So let's break it into three scenarios because life loves to keep things interesting. Scenario one, you don't have an iPad, but you are figuring out for a device that you need for your editing work. Should you hop on on the iPad bandwagon and subscribe to the Final Cut Pro? Well, my friend, if you are into long form of content, I would say hold your horses. But if you are those who make snappy short form videos, then the iPad and the Final Cut Pro might be just your ticket to editing glory. Consider it a worthy investment. Scenario 2. You already have an iPad, something like me, but doesn't have the Apple fancy silicon chips inside that. Should you rush to upgrade? Hold your excitement my friend. Take a deep breath and wait for the next generation of iPads because I am quite sure that the next generation of iPads will have a better camera sensor and a better processor. Patience is virtue and it might save you from a severe case of buyer's remorse. Trust me, I am holding out too. Scenario number 3. Ah, the lucky ones who already have the Apple Silicon's iPads with them. Should you dive headfirst into the world of Final Cut Pro on iPad? Well, well, well. It's a subscription model with first month free. Give it a whirl. It might just fit snugly into your workflow and you will be editing videos like a pro. And if it doesn't tickle your fancy, no worries. Cancel the subscription faster than you can say. Timeline. Oh, a million dollar question. Can iPads finally snatch the title, the laptop killer? Well, my friends, my personal answer is a resounding no. I won't be jumping on the Apple Silicon iPad bandwagon just yet and relying on the Final Cut Pro for my editing escapades. <laughs> so for now, laptops can breathe a sigh of relief. But mark my words, the iPad is strutting down a path where the line between a laptop and a tablet is getting as thin as the fashion model on a juice cleanse. But hey, I'm dying to know your thoughts on this daring move by Apple. Don't keep me in suspense. Share your wisdom and opinion in the comment section below and let's spark a fiery debate about the future of editing and battle between a laptop and an iPad. I'm all ears. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.